I want to share with you briefly uh, when I was he's, he's gonna, when I was uh, first coming to Christ. It was 1985. I was uh, reading my Bible through. I had not yet given my life uh, to Christ. I was reading the Bible uh, as a skeptic. Uh, you know, why should I believe this? But I said, you know, the Bible is the most influential book in history. Jesus is the most influential character uh, in history. So let me give it a shot. Let me see what it has to say. And in a typical day, I would be uh, watching uh, maybe a baseball, hockey, or football game, and I would have some music on that I would like to listen to, and I am reading the Bible at the same time. Well, one day, things turned around. I was listening to a group called uh, the B-52s. Okay, this is not working right now. Maybe I got to turn it back on. Yep, I got to turn it back on. A group called the B-52s, okay? Who are these guys? This is a punk rock group. This is the kind of stuff I was listening to. I'm reading my Bible, watching a football game, listening to the B-52s, all right? And all of a sudden, you know, I've listened to this cassette tape. Everybody remember what a cassette tape is? Okay, all right, cassette tape. I'm listening to this cassette tape. I've, I've listened to it maybe, you know, 500 times before. And all of a sudden, I hear them say, I worship hell. He deserves it. I said, whoa, I've listened to this about 500 times. I've never heard that before. And I stop, rewind, and play it again. Everybody remember how to use a tape recorder? You can actually stop and rewind, all right? And, and there it was again. I worship hell. He deserves it. And I say, whoa, I'm not listening to this stuff anymore. And I made the choice to, to give that up. But I learned something else very important on that day, that a song says a lot about the person who's singing it. Today, we're going to look at a song. A song that was, that was sung on, on Christmas morning. Uh, a song that was sung uh, not by a punk rock band, but by angelic host. A song that gives us insight into the mindset of heaven. Today, let this song be our song. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, our scripture reading. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. You're familiar with the story. Uh, Christ is born in a manger. An angel comes to shepherds and and introduces them and lets them know the, the good things that have happened uh, to them, uh, to the nation of Israel, and to all the world. And then this one angel is accompanied by a bunch of others. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest in on earth peace, goodwill toward men. A song here that was inspired by the love of God. A song that was inspired and stirred because of what they saw their king doing. Stepping down from his throne and coming to this tiny, sin-sick planet and taking upon himself our humanity. I want to look at this song Today, but first I want to I want to share with you things that are not in this song. I remember uh, I was uh, I was in IT for 26 years before I went into full time ministry, and I was working at Sikorsky Aircraft. Uh, I was a computer geek at, at Sikorsky Aircraft, and in my first year there, uh, I didn't you know I wasn't familiar with the, what what happens in the professional scene sometimes. But uh, one guy named Tom. Uh, he came up to me and said, hey, John, I've, I've given my two-week notice. I said, what? Tom, you're leaving? Uh, Tom was a buddy. Uh, Tom was a, was a good friend of mine. Uh, and, and when he told me, it just struck me. And he saw that I didn't know what to say. And he said, John, aren't you going to say congratulations? You know, aren't you going to say, hey, I'm happy for you? Uh, I couldn't. I was bummed. Tom was leaving me. Uh, Tom was not going to be, I'm not going to see him day by day anymore. I was lamenting. But please notice what this song does not say. In this song, we do not find the angel saying, woe is us, 
We are not going to have the company of our king anymore. Woe is us. We are not going to be in his presence to look upon his glory, to look upon his goodness, to, to bask in his love. Woe is us. We no longer have the son of God with us. That's not in the song. There is no reference to self in this song, not even in a positive light. Glory to God in the highest. We, he, has, he has given us a great privilege to serve him. He has given us this great honor to be uh, with him, to, to work in his name. No reference to self whatsoever. No lamenting, no reference to self. And in this song, there are no limits. Glory to God where? In the highest. And then where? On, on earth. As high as high is, and then as low as low is, as low as low is. No limits, no lamenting, no reference to self. But there are two elements in this, in this song that I want to look at. Glory to God and on earth peace. I want to take a look at those today. Let this song be our song. Glory to God in the highest. This is, a, this is a wish being expressed by heaven that God will be glorified, that God will be exalted, that God would be uplifted, that God's goodness and majesty will fill all the universe. This is a, a song, uh, a desire regularly expressed by the angels. Isaiah saw uh, the Lord high and, and lifted up. And he heard the uh, one seraphim say to another, I uh, said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is what? Filled with his glory. You and I see crime. You and I see garbage. You and I see nothing but, but sickness on this earth. But when the angels look upon this planet, they see the glory of God. Look at how merciful, look at how compassionate, look at how tender, look at how great uh, God is in the things that are going on in this world. You know, in this, in this world, um, bad news spreads like wildfire. You know that? But in heaven, good news spreads like wildfire. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Revelation gives us an insight to this as well. Revelation 4, uh, verse 9 and 8, the living creatures, what? Give glory and honor and thanks to him who is on the throne, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and is to come. This is the desire of angels, that God would be glorified. And this is the desire of every converted heart as well. We find this often in the Psalms. Notice what David tells us in Psalm 18, uh, verse 46. The Lord lives, blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be what? Exalted. I want people to see how good the Lord is. I want all the world to see the majesty of the Lord. Psalm 67, verse 3. Let the people praise you, O God. Let how many? Let all the people praise you. I want all my neighbors. I want all the nations. I want everyone in the world to praise the Lord. Because I have seen how good he is. And I know that he is worthy of that Praise. Psalm 100, verse 1, make a joyful noise unto the Lord who? All ye lands, all ye lands. God is worthy to be honored. God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be exalted. The angels know that. The converted heart knows that. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. This is a request, not that God's name be made holy, because it's already holy. This is a request that says, Lord, let your name be recognized as holy. Let there be so many more today who discover that you are God 
and that you are good. We want God to be exalted. We want God to be honored. It re the converted heart rejoices when others discover how good the Lord is. But we are also pained when God's name is dishonored in the world. I remember when I was first coming to Christ, one of the most, one of the most uh, popular, famous, and successful televangelists was Jimmy Swagger. A lot of people would listen uh, to his, his program. A lot of people would tune on. If they didn't have uh, you know, internet at that time, they would tune on uh, to his station and listen to his message. Very popular. Many people were contributing <clears throat> to his ministry. Uh, but a time came in the late 80s when he was discovered going into hotels with other women. And guess what the news media did? Broadcasted all over the place. And what was the, what was the mindset behind this? What was the thought behind this? Is Christianity a, a, a legitimate religion? This God of the Christians who cannot even keep this televangelist from uh, being unfaithful to his wife, God's name was dishonored. And for those who were converted, it was a painful experience. Glory to God in the highest. You know that you and I can contribute to that glory. You and I, as we express this wish in this song, can actually work to make this wish, make this prayer, make this expressed hope come about. How do we do that? How do we glorify God? How do we give glory to him? Number one, we need, like these angels in heaven, to become acquainted with him. We need to come to know his goodness. We need to come to know him intimately, come to know him personally. This is life eternal that they might what? Know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. When you become acquainted with God, you discover how compassionate he is, how loving he is, how good he is. You come to know that he is one that is safe to give your heart to and to put your trust in him. Sharing this goodness with others, letting other people know about the Lord, letting other people know that there is hope that there is something to live for, that there is something that will give your life meaning and living, living this goodness. What is that phrase? You've heard it before. I don't care how much you know until I know what, how much you care, how much you care. When we live that goodness, we see that goodness, we experience that goodness, and then that goodness transforms and changes us, and we share that. Let this song today be our song. Glory to God in the highest and on earth what? Peace, on earth peace. This is an expression. This is a, a wish that the angels, the desire that the angels are expressing that may those who are on the earth, those who are, who are in the midst of war, those who are in the midst of a battle, those who are in the midst of the great controversy, those who are struggling to, uh, to retain their sanity, may they have peace. This is an expression. This is a wish that the, the angels express time and time again. You'll find many places in scripture when an angel approaches a human being, they say time and time again, Fear not, fear not, fear not. Do not be frightened by my approach to you. I come to you bringing good, great tidings, good tidings of, of great joy. Time and time again, we find this expression in scripture. I know of a, a caseworker, I've read of a, a caseworker uh, who shared that her most difficult time in the work that she has done is trying to win the trust of a child who has been abused. 
I approach that child and that child becomes frightened. I try to assure that child and let him know that I'm not coming here uh, to punish them. I'm not coming here to hurt them. I am coming here for their good. And it takes a long time to win the trust of such a child. Well, the angels kind of go through something like that as well when they approach us. Fear not. I am not coming to call you to account for your sins. I'm not coming here uh, to do you harm. I'm not coming here to let you or to give you the idea that there is no hope. No, fear not. I have come here for your good. This is an express. This is an expression or this is a wish that the angels share time and time again with us. This is a wish that this is a desire that heaven wants for you and heaven wants for me as well. It is the desire of angels. It is the desire of heaven. And it is the desire of every converted heart. Peter shares with, with us in his last letter that he wrote, uh, he starts the letter by saying, grace and peace be what? Multiplied. Be multiplied unto you. I want you to experience grace. I want you to experience peace, not just in, in, in dribs and drabs, not in one drop here, one drop there, uh, not in not one day here and one day there, but no, I want it to be multiplied unto you. I want it to be something that you experience abundantly. The converted heart is burdened for those who have no sense of hope. The converted heart is burdened for those who are insecure in life, that are living by fear, that are uncertain of their standing with God, that are uncertain of his disposition toward them. The converted heart is burdened for those who do not have Christ in their life. And if you do not have Christ, you do not have true and genuine peace. What is this peace that heaven expressed a desire for on earth? Jesus made mention of this peace shortly before he went to the cross. He said, peace I leave with you. Whose peace? My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is a peace that is of divine origin. It is not a peace that you can manufacture. It is not a peace that I can manufacture. It is not a peace that we receive from a fellow human being. It is not a, a peace that we receive because of the amount of money in our bank account. It is not a peace that we receive because of the size of our house. This is a peace that only comes through Jesus Christ. This peace that the angelic hosts ask for in this song is available to everyone. It is available to you and it is available to me. But not everyone is going to experience it. I want to share with you the New American Standard Version of, of this song. Notice what it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men who what? With whom he is pleased. This is a little different from what we read in uh, King James and, and New King James. The, the, the original Greek actually is, is very interesting. On earth, peace in men, good pleasure. Well, how do I, how do I translate that? Does that mean that uh, I want on earth peace for men uh, with whom God is well pleased, or I want good pleasure for them as well? Either of them apply. They both are saying the same thing. I want peace for everyone. That peace is available to everyone, but not everyone is going to receive it. How do we receive this peace? How does that peace become ours. Again, let's go back to that passage in, in 2 Peter. I want to read the rest of that verse. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. How? In the knowledge of God. 
and of Jesus our Lord. Like, like that glory, we receive this when we know God. When it says the knowledge of God, it's just not, it's not merely an intellectual knowledge. Oh, I, I know my Bible left and right. I, I know the order of the books of the Bible. I know the different stories. I know the different passages. No, it's knowing him, being acquainted with him. Yes, know your Bible. Yes, study the Bible. That's the best way to get to know him. Uh, but be acquainted with him. Have a relationship with him. Know his ways. Know his words. Know his doings. Know how he has blessed and has delivered you throughout your life. When you know him, you will have that peace. You will know and be assured of your standing with him. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I've tried. I've tried to, to get by on my own. I have tried to earn God's favor, earn God's merit. But I have seen, I have seen that it's just not going to work. Give up. Surrender. Accept what Jesus has done for you as your only hope for God's acceptance. And when you give up control, oh my, there is peace. The peace that only comes from Christ. Let this song be our song today. So what's so important then about this song? What is its significance? Again, I want to point out that this is the song of heaven. How did they get this song? Because they're following the example of the Son of God. They have seen not just the majesty, not just the, just the radiance of God, but they have seen the goodness of God. They have seen the love of God. They have seen the compassion. And on that day, when they saw their beloved commander come forth from the womb of Mary as a helpless baby, how much more they saw of the sacrifice of God, of how far he was willing to go for this sin-sick world. Heaven was inspired by the example of its king and sought that he would be glorified and sought for man to be saved. Heaven's mindset must become our mindset. If we want to fit into heaven, in a sense, if we want a place among this angelic host, if we want to look upon our God in all his glory, in all his majesty, as they have done throughout the eons, we must share in this mindset. We must have this same burden, that our God would be glorified, that our God would be magnified, that our God would be exalted in all the world, in all the universe, and we too must share in the mindset that I want my troubled brother, I want my troubled sister, I want my troubled fellow human being to have that peace that only comes from God. This is a song that the redeemed will sing throughout all the ages. From the book, First Selected Messages, uh, page 250, I read the following. On, oh, that today the human family could recognize this song. The declaration then made, the note then struck, the tune then started, will swell and extend to the end of time and resound to the ends of the earth. Only the shepherds heard that song that morning. But in eternity, all the universe and all the earth will hear that song. I want to get back to the music that I used to listen to. Uh, I started coming to church regularly, finally. Uh, and we were singing songs from what's called the New Hymn Book. This was actually, I think, 1983, 1984, can't remember. It's not new anymore. 
Uh, but I was accustomed to a certain type of music. And when we would sing the songs, I, I thought, man, this is dry. I'll be honest. I said, this is dry. But things began to change. As I became, as I came to know Jesus more and more in my life, these songs began striking a chord in my heart. All the way my Savior leads me. Yes, I know what that's like now. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven's table. Later. I know what that means now. And I began enjoying these things. Now, I don't have the gift of singing. And people around me didn't want me to raise my voice too much. But boy, it, it began stirring my heart. And I learned that it wasn't so much the music in the background. It is do, do, are you in affinity with the, what these words are saying? Do you want that relationship with Jesus Christ? My prayer, my hope is that as we grow in our relationship with Christ, the song that was sung on the morning when Christ was born will become our song. That more and more, it will strike a chord in our heart. That more and more, we will want to see God glorified here on this earth and everywhere else, that more and more we will want others to come to know the peace that we have experienced. This is my prayer for each and every one of us in Jesus' name.